Judging by the number of videos on YouTube, there are a lot of all sky cameras out there. Most are homemade. Virtually all use sealed enclosures, making them 24 7, all season, all weather cameras. My approach isn't for a permanent outdoor camera. Instead, it's meant to be more of a portable, fair weather camera that I bring indoors when it's not in use. The camera consists of a Raspberry Pi 4. This one is the 4GB model and it's loaded with a 32GB SD card. A 65 watt battery pack powers everything. It's a little overpowered and costs as much as the Pi, but it runs everything. And at the end of 13 hours, there is still 40% power remaining. And that's at below freezing temperatures. There's plenty of reserve left for expanding functionality. The Raspberry Pi has Wi-Fi built in, and because it's running on battery, there are no wires into or out of the enclosure. It's a very portable camera, practically mobile. Imaging is handled by a Raspberry Pi HQ camera module. The Pi's camera module fits snugly inside this PVC reducer bushing. I filled it with epoxy and planted some threaded brass inserts into it to screw down the Raspberry Pi camera module. Like I said, I keep the camera indoors in a closet right next to my other astrophotography equipment. I put it out when I want to capture some sky. I'm a little timid though when it comes to threatening weather. Of course, precipitation is to be avoided, but surprises can happen. The weather can turn unexpectedly. That's a risk, just like for any astronomy gear. I need to pay attention to the weather. That's a lesson hard learned. A few nights ago, a rain shower passed by late in the night after I'd gone to bed. The next morning, I found that rainwater had collected in the PVC bushing. So, time for a design change. I drilled a couple of holes in the PVC bushing. I countersunk them and glued in some drainage tubes made from cocktail straws. I won't deliberately put the camera in harm's way just to see if this works, but if I'm caught off guard again, it could save the camera. As for the camera, it never stopped working, but I packed it in a bag of rice for 24 hours. Now it's back in service. I was lucky. Another design change occurred to me. If I give the lid a convex shape, it might help encourage runoff rather than let rainwater collect on the lid. I started by heating the plastic lid enough to make it pliable. Then I used a mixing bowl to give it shape and weighed it down until the lid cooled. I repeated the heating and shaping and ended up with this. It's not a very profound shape. But if there's no driving wind, it might be enough to shed the rainwater instead of draining it into the holes in the lid. In cold weather, I insulate the camera. I won't put the camera out at all if it's likely to rain, but I'll use the dome to hedge my bets and take the risk when I really want to catch some sky. I got this dome from Amazon. There are no scratches, it's very clean, but optically it has flaws. In the single images, the flaws are undetectable. In the time lapses, well, watch the Pleiades. You can see stars wobble around. I tell everybody that it's gravitational lensing. But there's no hiding the distortion in the star trails. Aside from the distortion, though, the dome displays reflections. 
Here the bright moon, but most often the neighborhood lights get reflected. So I rarely use the dome. Instead, I prefer this, a kind of collar. This one is made from a cottage cheese container. It's held in place by magnets, just like the dome. I like it because, among other considerations, there's one less layer of glass in the light path. But watch out for vignetting. The lens is better protected if it resides slightly withdrawn into the collar, but it needs a clear, wide-angle view of the sky. My lens has a field of view of 120 degrees. The height of this collar and the diameter of its opening is just right for this lens. The heat generated by the Raspberry Pi rises through the holes in the lid and into the collar. The warm air escapes through a gap around the lens, suppressing dew formation. Well, that's my scientific theory of thermodynamics. But it's borne out by these shots showing the collar on a cold winter night. On this particular night, it was minus 4 degrees Celsius. That's frost on the outside of the collar, but notice that the lens is clear. Ignore the sagging enclosure. It's lying on its side. This is another night. Last night, actually. It was a lot milder, but wetter. I had the presence of mind to record the conditions. In the midst of all this wetness, the lens is clear and dry. The all-sky camera isn't merely mounted to a pole. The pole is the skeleton of the camera. It's a combination of a three-quarter inch PVC pipe and a two-inch PVC pipe. The smaller pipe is the backbone of the camera, while the larger pipe is there for support and rigidity. The pipes are coaxial and are held in place by rubber donuts. These are anti-vibration pads that I cut the donuts from. I think I got these from Home Depot. If not, then the link in the description is for identical pads. Setup is quick and easy. I secure the camera to my deck railing with bungee cords. Each time I put out the camera, it's from a cold start. I connect the battery and button up the enclosure. And I roughly orient the camera to north. Even if it doesn't rain, there are potential threats to the camera, which include wind, vibration, gravity waves, but most nights the camera remains unmolested. If it starts to rain, and I'm awake, I'll retrieve the camera. Takedown takes but a moment. Links for the Raspberry Pi, the camera module, the lens, the battery, they're all in the description. I got the coffee at Walmart. <laughs>